What's up guys, this is Brad. So there've been a lot of new collectors lately coming over and looking into the hobby of graded sports magazines, especially since the recent announcement from PSA that they will be grading these magazines in 2025. And of course, one of the first questions that a lot of these people ask is about value. Do any of these actually have any legitimate value? Well, the hobby is still fairly new, but it's gained a lot of popularity over the last two or three years. And so I know I put a lot of content out there and over the years I've shared a bunch of the CG GC slabs that I've gotten, but I thought it would be cool to go ahead and put together one video that features, as of now, what are my most valuable issues that I've amassed in my collection. All right, let's get this started. So first off, please know that these figures are just estimates, but they are based off of other comparable sales. And, um, you know, you never really know what a magazine would go for in market. There's a lot of different variables, but try to be conservative in some of these estimates. And also, I do have quite a few magazines that probably could have been right around uh, the number 10 spot, but I went ahead and, and just narrowed it down to 10. So first one we're going to look at is number 10. This is Tiger Woods' first cover from 1996. It is a newsstand, and uh, it's graded at CGC 9.6. Of course, Tiger's first cover, absolutely beautiful first cover. In two months as a pro, he has transformed an entire sport. And uh, as a CGC 9.6, this copy, I estimate, is valued at around $1,500. There have been 144 newsstand copies of this issue graded. This is definitely one of the most collectible modern covers out there for Sports Illustrated. And there are currently 18 9.6s, and there are only right now 11 9.8s. Those 9.8s really don't go up for sale uh, hardly ever. And so uh, this is an issue that can be can be tough to grab a high copy of. But despite the fact that Tiger is now really in the twilight of his career, collectors have shown that his issues, especially his first cover, are still very, very desirable. All right, coming in at number nine, which technically is the same estimated price as the previous one, this is Randy Moss's first Sports Illustrated cover from 2002. And, uh, of course, playing with the Minnesota Vikings. This issue is interesting because it's got a cover flap. You can see the, the left portion of the magazine is actually a cover flap. you got a little inset photo of Brett Favre. And uh, if you were to rip that cover flap off, uh, you would still have the full Sports Illustrated. It, it would actually be a larger uh, photo with, uh, you know, the background there behind Randy Moss, but it's got that cover flap over the top. So sometimes you'll see this issue with the flap. Sometimes you'll see it without the flap. And this is CGC 9.8, um, of Randy Moss's first cover. I estimate this one also at 1500. Anytime you've got a 9.8, especially of a, of a really collectible hall of famer like Randy Moss, that carries value. Um, you know, a 9.6 in this in this issue would probably drop down to maybe maybe 500. That's just a total guess, but the 9.8s really jump up in value. There have only been 21 newsstand copies of this issue graded, and this is one of only three 9.8s of Randy Moss's first cover. Coming in at number eight, this is one of my more recent pickups, and this is one that I absolutely love. This is the very first issue for Sports Illustrated. It came out in 1954, August 16th of 1954, the premier issue for Sports Illustrated, um, at least the, the version from Time, Inc., which is, which is what we all uh, grew to know and love. This is Eddie Matthews on the cover, Hall of Fame baseball player for the Braves. Uh, I think he actually played for... Milwaukee Braves, Atlanta Braves, and uh, what was it? Maybe the Boston Braves. I think he may have played in all three. And uh, so Eddie Matthews on the first cover of Sports Illustrated is actually really cool because back in this era of Sports Illustrated, they didn't really focus yet on the arena sports. You think about Sports Illustrated, you think about baseball, football, basketball, maybe some hockey, maybe a couple others. But uh, in the 50s, Sports Illustrated was really focusing more on like the uh, the upper class uh, white people. If we're just going to be honest, you had a lot of random just uh, sporting lifestyle covers, you know, whether it be hunting or you know, wind sailing or scuba, uh, you'd have different landscapes and mountainsides, just a a lot of uh, random covers that you wouldn't think of today being on Sports Illustrated. So it's really awesome that they graced us with a Hall of Fame baseball player on issue number one. Now, this copy is 
uh, pretty common. This was um, released basically only as a newsstand. Now that's, that's not necessarily true. They did have a handful of subscribers already built up at this time whenever they sent out issue number one. But every single subscriber that received their copy of the premier issue, they received it in an envelope. And so the mailing labels were on that envelope and there's not any copies of this issue that had the mailing label on the cover. Uh, when you go to issue number two, the very next issue of Sports Illustrated, which had golf bags on the cover, those subscription copies did have the mailing label directly on the cover. But that's not the case for issue number one. So every copy of this issue that you'll find is considered a newsstand by CGC standards, because really there's no way of differentiating the true newsstand versus the ones that were mailed to the subscribers in the envelopes. So this is also the most frequently graded Sports Illustrated copy of all time. That's largely due to the fact that, yes, they're all considered newsstands, but also Sports Illustrated kept a uh, basically a backlog or a back order of all these. They kept all their extra copies in a warehouse for many years, and then they were sold later on, uh, later on uh, years later, as collector's items. So there's lots of these out there. Uh, even at the CGC 9.8 level, I think they're, it's pushing around 100. And I actually had a 9.4 copy for quite a while. But I decided that because they were so plentiful, I wanted to find a unique copy that was signed by Eddie Matthews. And that's exactly what I've got here. A little bit difficult to see in this photo, but right above Eddie Matthews' head, uh, you can see a signature there. It's actually in silver Sharpie. And uh, the glare of this photo doesn't make it pop really well, but it is, it's very nice in person. I estimate this one to be valued at about $1,800, and that is based on some very recent sales. Next up at number seven, and this is the first Sports Illustrated cover for Albert Pujols. Of course, I'm a huge Cardinals fan, but uh, he is definitely one of the greatest baseball players of all time, and uh, and for sure one of the greatest, if not the greatest, of this most recent generation. This is a CGC 9.8 cover of his very first, uh, it's a 9.8 copy of his very first Sports Illustrated cover, Smashing in St. Louis. Really nice looking cover. Um, CGC has yet to label it as Pujol's first cover, which is very unusual and disappointing. I estimate the value of this one to be at about $2,000. Pujol's is a big time, big time Hall of Famer. And with it being a CGC 9.8, once again, that really amplifies the value. There have been 31 newsstand copies of this one graded. And as of now, there are seven 9.8 copies. Coming in at number six, it's one of my favorite athletes of all time, and that's Kobe Bryant. And this is a unique publication. This is the Fan Magazine, and this is from 1996. The Fan Magazine was a regional Philadelphia sports magazine. And so this cover features Kobe while he's still in high school, playing for Lower Marion High School. And it says, is this kid really ready for the pros? Awesome cover, awesome moment in time of Kobe Bryant, who went on to become one of the absolute all-time greats, and he's getting ready to enter the NBA draft as a high schooler, and there's questions about whether or not he's ready and you know whether or not this is going to pan out, and uh, this is one of my favorite covers. I got this graded as a CGC 9.6. My estimated value is around $2,000. Over two years ago in 2022, uh, an exact 9.6 copy of this sold on Heritage Auctions for $1,300. And uh, I definitely think that the value of this would have increased by now. At that time, it was a, a relatively unknown publication, but uh, it's gotten a little bit more awareness since then. So I definitely would expect it to fetch more than $1,300 in auction today. There have only been 10 newsstand copies of this graded, so it is not easy to find by any means. There are four 9.6s, and there's currently one 9.8. Coming in at number five, this is one of the holy grails in this hobby. It's the first Sports Illustrated cover from Muhammad Ali. It's from 1963. Of course, he was still known as Cassius Clay. This precedes him becoming heavyweight champion for the first time. That didn't happen until the following year in 1964 when he defeated Sonny Liston. I would estimate this at approximately $2,000, even though it's only a 5.0. This is a newsstand copy. Newsstand copies of this Muhammad Ali first cover are almost impossible to find. And uh, you can see the pop report there as evidence. I mean, for this being considered a top five most collectible issue of all time, it's only been graded 35 times as newsstand. And that's because it is so 
difficult to obtain in newsstand. If you didn't know, Sports Illustrated only produced about 3% of their print run as newsstands. The majority were subscription copies that were mailed off to the subscribers that had the mailing label on the cover. So this is one of the lower graded copies of Muhammad Ali's first cover. It's a pop two at the 5.0 level. And uh, there's 29 copies graded higher out of only 35 in total. But still, once again, very, very hard newsstand issue to find of one of the greatest athletes ever. Coming in at number four, this is the first Sports Illustrated cover for Michael Jordan. Now, his first pro cover seems to get a little bit more attention. It's been out there a lot more often in some of the big public op auctions. And of course, his first pro cover does currently hold the record for the highest sale of all time when a 9.8 copy sold for $126,000 last year in 2023. But this first cover is still ultra collectible and right up there kind of on that same level. Of course, he shares the cover with Sam Perkins, but they're in college playing for North Carolina. And this is a CGC 8.0 newsstand copy. There have been a couple uh, 8.0s and similarly graded copies of this issue that have hit public auction over the last couple of years. So this estimate of $4,000 is, is based off of some of those sales. There have been 157 newsstand copies of this issue graded, and there are 17 8.0s. There are 15 copies currently graded higher. Now, sticking with the college Michael Jordan this is not only one of my most valuable, but also one of my most unique covers. This is from 1984. It's NBA Today magazine. NBA Today was a publication that actually came out in kind of a newspaper form, but they had this NBA draft guide as an insert on the inside of their traditional publication. So this was an insert that was inside their normal NBA Today issue. And a uh, very, very cool NBA draft guide previewing the upcoming NBA draft, which we, of course, know Hakeem Olajuwon went on to be drafted number one. There he is on the left playing with Houston at that time known as Akeem Olajuwon. And then Michael Jordan there on the right throwing it down with North Carolina. He ended up being drafted number three behind Sam Bowie. This is CGC 8.5 copy. I estimate this at around $4,000. This is one that's really hard to estimate. Um, there have been a couple sales on this, a 7.5 sold for over a thousand dollars on heritage auctions, um, a year or two ago. But the reason that I've got this one estimated significantly higher at $4,000 is because this is the highest graded copy in the world. There've only been 14 copies of this insert, uh, NBA draft guide graded. And, uh, yeah, this is the highest graded copy out there. So that adds extra premium whenever it is a pop one with none higher, and especially for what is probably the most collectible athlete in this entire hobby. Coming in at number two, this is another big dog first cover from Sports Illustrated, and it's Roberto Clemente, absolute baseball legend. And uh, it's a CGC 8.5 copy. This issue is almost impossible to find in newsstand. I know I just said that about the Muhammad Ali first cover, uh, but I, I believe that one had 35 newsstand copies graded. And you can see that this one is even more scarce. Only 22 newsstand copies have been graded of this Roberto Clemente for Sports Illustrated cover. Ultra collectible. It's also a beautiful cover. Love all those covers. And uh, we know how Roberto Clemente tragically lost his life early. So this CGC 8.5 copy of Clemente's first SI cover is a pop two. There are only two 8.5s. And then there are only two graded higher, which are both 9.0s. One of those 9.0s sold in public auction for $18,000. So uh, this 8.5, once again, that's just an estimate. Kind of hard to guess on this one as well because there have been so, so few sales. But with the 9.0 selling for eighteen grand, I went ahead and made an estimate of $5,000 for this 8.5 copy. And my number one most valuable magazine in my collection is definitely the holy grail in the hobby. That's Mickey Mantle's first Sports Illustrated cover from 1956. Just an iconic cover. And uh, this is a newsstand of, again, difficult to find, although not quite as rare as the Ali and the Clemente. 
but the status of Mantle just, just shoots this one through the roof. Everybody wants a newsstand copy of Mickey Mantle's first Sports Illustrated cover. I've had several people reach out to me to try and, and buy this copy off of me, but uh, it's not for sale. It's something I plan on holding for a long time because if there's one if there's one issue in this hobby that I could really see down the road uh, just exponentially growing in value, similarly to how you know some of the top sports cards like Mickey Mantle's 1952 tops, or similarly to some of the top comics like maybe the Superman number one or Amazing Fantasy 15, the way that you see some of those uh, collectible items selling for six figures, sometimes even seven figures, this would be the one issue for Sports Illustrated that I could see doing the same thing. So this CGC 8.0 copy, I'm estimating to be worth around $18,000 right now. And that is because an exact 8.0 copy such as this one sold for $18,000 just two months ago. Uh, so it's, it's very, very collectible, very desirable, and it's easily the most valuable issue in my collection right now. There have been 66 newsstand copies of this graded. Now, one thing to understand is that combines the centerfold variant with the non-centerfold variant. There was a version of this magazine that went out, which was missing pages 37 through 41. Actually, the majority of them that were sent out were missing pages. Actually, I think pages 37 through 40, which was the centerfold. And so the, the centerfold variant is the version that did have those pages. And that's actually a little bit more rare. Um, I think that of the 66 graded, maybe only 25 or 30 of them, I think maybe 25 or so are the centerfold variant. The majority do not have pages 37 through 40, such as this one. This is not a centerfold variant copy right here. Um, haven't seen a huge disparity in the in the collectability or value between those, between the centerfold and non. But if you look at the Census and CGC's website, it is breaking up. It, they're broken up into two separate categories, which is why I want to explain and give the caveat that my numbers here have those uh, two categories combined. 66 newsstand copies graded of both of those variants. Uh, at the 8.0 level, this is one of four. There are four 8.0s of this Mickey Mantle first cover, and there are currently 19 copies graded higher. All right, that's it. Hope you enjoyed that. I know that it's always fun to talk about value when it comes to our collectibles. If you've not yet done so, please subscribe to this channel. I also appreciate likes and comments, and until the next video, we'll see you next time.